Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Rich Ladder here. One lifetime as always. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be talking about the WNBA first team. So we talked about it in a previous video on the channel where we, you know, kind of went over who made the team and all of that. But in, you know, controversial fashion, you know, a lot of people were upset that Caitlin Clark was on the all WNBA first team. And I saw a debate breaking out on Twitter. Um, between, you know, some media members who shall remain nameless, uh, fans and other people just, you know, commentating kind of on what they thought about the teams. And the big thing I was seeing was Sabrina Ionescu should have been first team all WNBA over Caitlin Clark. It was my mindset that I don't think the two necessarily should have been compared because let's take away the top three of Asia Wilson, Rihanna Stewart, Nafisa Collier. Let's move them to the side. There, there's some set in stone right there. Uh, Caitlin was the fourth leading vote getter there. And then we'll put Alyssa Thomas there because I feel like the argument should not be between Sabrina Ionescu and uh, Caitlin Clark, but Alyssa Thomas and Sabrina Ionescu. And looking at it, uh, I think there are a lot of reasons that people are kind of conflating the two. So, one, Alyssa Thomas and Sabrina Nescu were way closer in voting. Uh, so that's kind of how that should be directed. But I guess people feel that, you know, Sabrina and Caitlin play similar games. Um, I am of the opinion that they kind of play different games. Like, <laughs> you know, they're, you know as far as Caitlin with the playmaking, the passing, the deep shooting, uh, and being the overall engine for the offense. Um, while Caitlin is playing with recent number one draft pick of uh, Aaliyah Boston, veteran player like Kelsey Mitchell, Sabrina Inescu is playing with two former MVPs in her starting lineup. So they're not necessarily doing the same thing. They don't have the same jobs, but we need to – look, I think, at the stats and a lot of stats that tell us a story. So um, I've got this here pulled up. So let's take a look at this. This is this is quite damning, actually. Um, so um, we got 40, 40 and 38 games played. Uh, as you guys can see, the highlighted versions are the stat leader. So right away, what jumps out at me is Sabrina Ionescu leads in no category, not points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, field goal percentage, three point percentage, free throw or effective field goal percentage, which is a combination of your three point shooting, your free throws, two pointers. So right away there, that's already a red flag. Like as far as like, if you're going to say you should take off Caitlin Clark, but I'm adding in Alyssa Thomas here. And, but if I didn't have that, Caitlin would have the rebounding advantage. Caitlin also has the assist advantage. She would have the steal advantage. She would have the f uh, field goal percentage over Sabrina. Sabrina has no stat-based argument uh, on Caitlin as an individual player at all. So what Sabrina has is team success and wins. And we already talked about the two MVP candidates that are in her starting lineup or former MVPs that are in their starting lineup, Brianna Stewart being first team all W at some point, a team that good is going to have one player kind of get left behind. Like they're going to, they're not going to put two people on first team all, um, you know, WNBA. Like you can look at like the Miami heat when uh, Wade and Bosch and uh, LeBron James were there. I believe LeBron was the only person that was getting first team all W or all NBA stuff because the lineup is so, overpowered it's like you have to make uh, room for other people on other teams that are the number one option and reason for the team success rather than just you know rewarding that group particularly so like look at Caitlin Clark for example 19 points a game uh five total rebounds a game just about six if you want to round it up leads the league and assists so like right there she's already got great things that jump out at you she's the highest scorer leads the league and assists complete offensive uh, engine revolutionized the league with her popularity and, you know, the ratings and stuff like that. That's going to weigh out, I think, in a voter's mind. Um, you know, Sabrina and Alyssa did, you know, 
uh, get to represent the country. Caitlin Clark did not. Um, you know, and when you look at it, defense is not factored in this. I think Alyssa Thomas is by far the best defender here. If you're looking at the defense, it's not really like a huge difference between Caitlin and Sabrina. And Caitlin Clark's like the number one on her team. Sabrina's the number two at best on her team. So I think Caitlin's going to naturally get uh, more rewarded there. I don't really see any argument for um, Alyssa Thomas to re- basically replace Caitlin Clark as far as like, all right, we're going to put her at four and then Sabrina slides in over Caitlin Clark. I just don't see how that adds up. So for me, the real argument is Alyssa Thomas versus Sabrina Ionescu. And at that point, I think you got to reward Connecticut also. So like Connecticut got to the three seed. They had a really great year and Alyssa Thomas is their best player. And I know you jump out and you look at the 10.6 points, uh, but you also got to look at the assists and the rebounds and factor in the defense. Like she drives her team in a similar way to Caitlin Clark, but from the defensive end, like she's the um, – kind of like the personality, the glue, the leader for that. And I think that stuff has to be rewarded. Like, it's nice to look at the stats, but we got to look at how the these people are affecting the games. I feel like the voters got it right. If you want to argue Sabrina over Alyssa, I'll hear you out. But you have to explain to me why we don't reward Connecticut for being um, one of the best teams in the league all year, while – the Liberty has this stack team, John Quill Jones, uh, Leonie Feebage, Brianna Stewart, and Sabrina Inescu. Like, somebody's got to fall elsewhere. So that's where Sabrina ended up on the second team. That's where John Quill Jones ended up on the second team. And I think the voters kind of spread it around. In no world does Sabrina have a better case uh, than Caitlin Clark. Uh, and Caitlin Clark it has a way better case than Alyssa Thomas because I feel like her offense and her overall impact on not only her team, but the league itself leads uh, to, you know, a, a, a better voting percentage there. And I think it was, it said something that Caitlin was the only guard period uh, that made the team. The rest were forwards and, you know, centers essentially. And, I think that is <laughs> that is kind of uh, a hard look into what this league is and you know what it has been. It has been a post up, back to the basket, um, f- you know, big post driven league. And in year one, Caitlin was already able to elevate herself. And I think as this league grows and kind of expands more, it's going to come from the guard position. Like it's going to come from Sabrina being a threat to be on this first team every year. When Paige comes in, when Juju comes in with uh, continued great play from, you know, those like Arike. Um, I think that just for this year though, the voters did get it right. Uh, I t- trying to say that Caitlin Clark shouldn't be, on first team, uh, all W uh, seems like pure hateration, and I, <laughs> I really don't respect uh, anyone. You know, trying to argue it from a basketball standpoint. You can throw turnovers at me, and that doesn't really move me because she is a high usage player, and high usage players do tend to have turnovers. So, like, you know, you know who else like has lots of turnovers? LeBron James, Luka Doncic. Like, these are people that turn the ball over, but are responsible for so much statistically. And even if that's your thing, like it's not going to look like that forever. And I don't think it was enough to outweigh the, the massive insane production essentially from, (laughs) from uh, Caitlin. You can just look at it here. If I took Alyssa Thomas out of this thing, right? So I took Alyssa out of there and now I just have Sabrina Ionescu there. So it's really quite clear. Like, even if, you know, stats don't tell the whole story, this will tell you about 75% of it. And then you got to add in the context of Caitlin being the clear-cut best player on her team, Sabrina not being the clear-cut best player on her team, and how that shakes out as far as, like, what voters want to reward. So, like, look at this. Like, 19 to 18, 5 to 4, 8.4 to 6. Um, got her in steals, got her in blocks. Got her in field goal percentage, three point percentage, free throw line, and when I say got her, it's 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 close. Like it's it's not absurd, but just the way that all you know NBA voting normally works seems like all W voting is working the same way in this case. It's like 
your team is so overloaded there. We're going to move you down, but we're going to reward the player on the slightly less achieving team that was more outstanding individually because ultimately that is kind of an individual designation. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Did the voters get it right? I think they did, and I think the real debate should be between Alyssa Thomas and Sabrina Ionescu. And if I had to pick between them, I think I'm still going to go with Alyssa Thomas because I feel it's important to reward Connecticut for the season that they had. So um, let me know what you think. I'll holla at y'all. Peace. One lifetime.